pizza. I mean, what more can I say? There's nothing better than pulling a pizza fresh from the wood oven, smoking hot, little bubbles on the crust and the melting cheese shared beneath the trees with good friends. I mean, come on, it's not going to get any better than that. This series is all about wild seasonal ingredients and the rich smoky flavours that fire can bring to your cooking. We want to reintroduce you guys into the art of cooking in the great outdoors, using forgotten ingredients, mouth-watering recipes to create a true feast over fire. This is Fire, Smoke and Iron. So today we're going to be using dandelions and dandelions are the quintessential garden weed that you can find all throughout the spring and the summer. Really easy to identify by their bright yellow blossom and their dark green jaggedy toothed leaves. So we like to use these as an alternative to a bitter salad green but they're equally great kind of wilted down just like you may cook spinach. The blossoms are also great, they've got this really nice sweet honey flavour and they are fantastic either use fresh or you can batter them, fry them or use them as infusions in things like vinegars, syrups or jams. As with all foraging, always ensure to wash all of your ingredients before using them and only take what you can consume. We want to leave plenty for the wildlife around us. Pizza's a real crowd pleaser, and it's a great one for the kids to get stuck in with. This week, we're swapping out the fire pit for one of our favorite toys, the Gosney Rock Box. The Rock Box is a restaurant grade quality portable pizza oven that runs either off gas or wood. We're using the wood burner 2.0, and it's gonna be kicking out a heat of around four to 500 degrees, meaning we can cook our pizzas in around 90 seconds or so. Our oven's been warming up for a couple of hours as we've been using wood. If you're using gas at home, then it's a little bit quicker. If you don't have a pizza oven, then you can get away with doing this in a kettle barbecue with a really nice thick pizza stone. You're just not gonna get that really puffy crust that we're gonna get with the rock box. We're gonna start by making our dough. This is a classic Neapolitan style dough. Nice and simple. We're just gonna ferment that dough for between 48 and 72 hours. So we need to take a big bowl and in that big bowl, we're gonna add in 600 milliliters of room temperature water. And then into that, we're gonna mix a pea-sized amount around one and a half grams of yeast. We want a really nice, long, slow ferment on this dough. And that slow fermentation is gonna really increase the flavor profile of our pizza. And pizza basically is all about the bread. So if the bread's not good, everything else is gonna fall apart. It doesn't matter what else you put on top of it. So our yeast is completely mixed in and dissolved. And then we're gonna slowly add in our flour. So we're using a kilo of flour just a kind of handful at a time. You want to get it nice and incorporated, any of those big lumps out, kind of using your fingers like a dough hook, kind of mixing it around until it's all incorporated and it'll start coming together. We've just got our last bit to add in. Kind of getting all that water absorbed into the flour. You want to pick up all the flour in the bowl, not leaving any behind. And then we'll slowly start folding that dough in on itself, forming it into a rough ball. If you're at home and in the kitchen, you can do this in a mixer with a dough hook attachment. Save your arms. So what we have is a fairly rough dough. So it's not nice and smooth and silky, but we're gonna leave this to rest for five minutes for the flour to hydrate and absorb all that water and then we're gonna knead it properly to make it silky smooth. So I'm just gonna set this aside and cover it with the bowl. And that's just gonna sit for five minutes. And in that five minutes, we can go on and make our sauce. So we've got some tin plum tomatoes, which we've drained away some of the excess moisture from. A good pinch of salt. This is a bit messy. I'm gonna put my hands in and we're just gonna break down these plum tomatoes. We don't want them to be mushy and super fine. We want the sauce to have some texture. You can use an immersion blender, but you just want to pulse it. You don't want to completely pulverize these tomatoes. Once the tomatoes are broken down and we've mixed the salt in, we can put that to one side. The dough's been resting for five minutes and the texture of it has changed quite significantly from being all scraggly and rough and it's kind of smoothed itself out. Now the flour's all hydrated. So we're going to take our salt. We've got 25 grams of salt and 20 grams of water. 
which means that our dough is hydrated to 62%. And we're just gonna stir that salt to dissolve it in the water before we add it to our dough. Once the salt's pretty much dissolved, put it into our dough, back in with our hands. Once all the water's incorporated to this dough, we can get the dough out onto the bench and give it a good knead. And then we're just going to stretch to develop all those gluten strands within the dough, giving our dough a much better structure. And the structure is going to help to catch all of those little bubbles of carbon dioxide as the yeast rises slowly. And it will hold that puff once it hits the pizza oven floor. As we knead the dough, it's really important not to use any extra flour on your workbench, as that's going to change the hydration of your dough. And we've been quite particular about the amount of water, salt and yeast that we've added. Your dough shouldn't be sticky if you've used the right amount of water and the water's weighed, not measured by millilitres. So it's always measured by the gram. So once the dough is nice and silky smooth, after a good five or so minutes of kneading, we're gonna bulk ferment this for 24 hours before we even think about balling it up. So that slow fermentation is gonna give a little bit of rise. And then once they're balled up, we're gonna give it another 24 to 48 hours. The longer you ferment it, the slightly sourer the dough becomes, and that's all just flavor really. So this is now ready to be bulk fermented in the fridge. So we'll place it in our bowl, cover it nice and tightly with cling film before putting it in the fridge. But for today, I made a dough a few days ago so we can crack on with our pizzas. We're now gonna move on to our venison sausages. And we're gonna put those into a preheated pan with a drizzle of oil. So we're just gonna take the venison sausage out of its casing. We just wanna cook it through. Um, so when it goes into the pizza, we know that it's 100% cooked through. Otherwise, if you put it onto your pizza raw, the intense heat cooks it really quickly from underneath and on top, but it doesn't always drive that heat into the middle of the meat. Sausage has been cooking away for the last five or so minutes. So we're just gonna take them out of the pan. They haven't got much color. They've literally just cooked through. And then we're gonna move from the hot skillet into a bowl, ready for topping our pizzas. Now you want this to ideally cool down the next five or so minutes. And that's just because if we go ahead and put hot toppings on our pizza, it's gonna make the dough soggy and harder to work with when we put it on and off of our peel. We've got our dough that proved for 24 hours in a bulk fermentation as a whole. And then after that 24 hours, we divide it into six equally sized balls and roll those up nice and tight. Put them in a tray with a nice tight fitting lid and that will go in the fridge for another 24 or 48 hours, depending on how sour you like your pizza. This has gone for a full 72 hours in total. And we're just gonna take one ball at a time, dust it with a little bit of flour when we take our dough ball out of the tray, we wanna be nice and careful with it, trying to keep as much of that air in as possible. So just slacken it off from each side, our dough scraper underneath it, and we'll put that ball into a bowl of flour. So with our dough lightly dusted underneath, we're gonna put it onto a lightly floured surface. So you can see that there's a good amount of gas in the dough and we want to push all that gas outwards into the crust. So we're going to take our hands and we're going to push into the middle and you can see that it pushes that gas off. And we're going to do that in a nice circular motion and down towards the edge of the crust. And that's just going to move all those air bubbles from the center and it's going to give us a nice, light, airy crust. And then we can start picking it up and just turning and gently stretching that crust until it's roughly the same size as our paddle. So we've got a little bit of our way to go. Now, it's not essential for it to be perfectly round. It's still going to taste amazing. And then just before we top it, 
we're going to move away our flour and then we're going to go on with our tomato sauce. One or two of these, making sure that our base has got a nice even layer. And pizzas, it's more, it's more about seasoning the bread. We don't want all of our toppings to be super heavy. Next, we've got our venison sausage meat, which is now nice and cool. And we're gonna follow that up with some dandelion leaves, which Becky picked earlier. And then we have our cheese, a nice big handful all the way to the edge. Just a pinch of salt and a little pepper. We've got a nice big rolling flame under the rock box. If there's not one, we just need to stoke it back up with a little bit more kindling. And then we're gonna pull our pizza onto the peel, just readjusting so we can make it as big as we possibly can. We'll give the peel a little jiggle to make sure that the pizza's not stuck to it. And then we're gonna launch it into the rock box nice and confidently. And that's gonna cook for around 90 seconds. And we're gonna turn it every 10 to 20 as it starts to color. The flames at the back rolling over the pizza. So we need to make sure that we cook it on both sides. So you can see we've started to get a nice little leoparding on the crust, which is gonna give it a little turn and then go back into the oven. And there we have it. Perfectly cooked pizza. In just a few seconds, created this really nice, gnarly, crispy crust, which is gonna be full of little air pockets. The cheese is perfectly melted. It's almost too good to share. I really hope you enjoyed today's recipe. If you get the chance to recreate this for family and friends at home, then please do share it with us on social media. We'd love to see what you guys create. If you're interested in any of the items we've used in today's video, then there's some handy links in the description box below. Don't forget to subscribe to keep up to date with all of our future releases. Next week, we've got something really special for all you sweet tooths out there.